The Form I-131 is a travel document for those who are looking for a way to travel to their home country just like the Philippines if you are still on the process of adjusting your status from a non-immigrant to a permanent residence here in the United States of America. How to do it? Let's talk about that in this video. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. <music> video we are going to talk about the form I-131. I am used to be a J-1 teacher now a permanent residence here in the United States of America. I have a 212E rule and this is how I did my form I-131. First I secure my I-485 concurrent filing with my I-765 and then this travel document, the I-131. You don't need to submit this one if you don't feel like it or you don't have any need to go back to your home country just like the Philippines where I used to live and that is my home country as well. In order to do this, you have to know if this is available in the USCIS.gov. Look at the form. I'm also going to put in the description that way you know which is the right one. The first thing you have to do is, aside from printing, the form is print the instructions. It is needed, that way you know what are the things you have to fill out in the form. This is how it looks like in the first page. Make sure the expiration date is not expired yet and look at the latest one, that way it will help you to process your papers properly. Then start with the section that says start here and use the black ink. I filed my papers way back in 2021. There are some changes that they did but not most of it and I did it through paper filing. Just take a look at the website on the filing fee that way you know how much it's gonna be or it's gonna be free. Just take a look at it that way you are sure on the filing fees and the process. My class of admission is J1 teacher, so I put J1 teacher over here. And it's really up to you what kind of class admission you are from your home country. Part two is where you have to see the application type. Since I want my application to be an advanced parole, that's why I have to put or had my check mark in this section. So just make sure what are the ideas you have and the purpose why you wanted to have a travel document. Look at the processing information as well. This is going to be confidential, so just put the highlighted part on the information that is valid and important to you. This is how it looks like on my page 3. Most likely, you have to put NA if that is not applicable to you. I am a J1 teacher who is single from the Philippines and got married here in the United States to a single U.S. citizen husband of mine, no strings attached, so everything is very simple. Most of the time, I just put N slash A. There are certain questions here that you wanted to answer on your own, it says yes or no. Just check the box that is applicable to you. Page 4 is where you have to answer this page as well. And I put the highlighted part there that you have to give an explanation why you wanted to have an advanced parole for this specific travel document. So with that, you have to give a letter explaining why you wanted to have a travel document and it should be compelling especially if you do it yourself and you don't have any person or immigration lawyer that helps you with this one so it's just like a letter attached to this form wanting to ask the USCIS officer or your adjudicating officer the importance of having an advanced parole or a document that way you could go back to your home country which is just let's just say the philippines so with my experience i have received a combo card with the uscis which is already my work permit the i-765 and it says there advanced parole a document as well so it's just a one card that i received and it's two in one that's why they call it combo card 
page five is where you have to put your applicant's signature which is you filing this form make sure you have all the details you put there but if it's not applicable to you just put n slash a so this form is very simple it only has five pages but again please print the pdf instruction that way you will also be guided on what are other information and documents or letter you have to include in this form submitting to the specific address that is needed for the uscis officer to receive the form read this one and hopefully you will also receive a combo card some of our j1 teachers with 212e rule who are risk takers they submitted their form i-485 they had received only their EAD or the I-765 work permit. So there is a standalone and a combo card. Hoping that you're gonna receive your combo card because that's gonna be again a work permit and your advanced parole. But most likely if you really are pursuing the permanent residence card which is the green card I am not an immigration lawyer this is just based on my experience even though i received my combo card i did not go back to the philippines not unless i have my green card and i am so excited that now i receive the much awaited green card through my u.s citizen husband from j1 teacher with 212 e rule now a green card holder and we are hoping that in a year, we're going to be going back to the Philippines and he will be coming with me as well. And this is the end of this video. If you would like to know more about the details, we have here our website, powerfulcoupljourney.com, where you could see some of our documents submitted for J1 waiver with 212 e rule. And also, we have the J1 Waiver Helping Hands group where we discuss different kinds of ideas on how to waive the J1 212E rule through DIY and also some people who would like to share their immigration lawyers if they wanted to have someone that will help them in the process. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. God bless!